Hi everyone, Matteo here. In this video, we're going to brew some coffee using the Bialetti Mocha Express one cup. This mocha pot keeps the same design of the other Bialetti Mocha Express, as you can see, but of course, it's smaller. The capacity in the boiler is 60 grams of water at room temperature. And in the basket, depending on the roast level of our coffee and also its density, 7 grams uh, for dark roast, 8 grams for medium roast and 9 grams for light roast. I wanted to mention this because it's really important for the extraction. Because one of the most important thing when we are brewing our coffee with a one cup mocha pot is the bed depth. Depth. Depth, no? I hate this word. Depth. What is the bed depth? Is the profundity of the coffee cake in the basket. Can I say profundity? Yeah. Why did not use it before? It's the profundity of the coffee cake. If we compare three baskets of three different mocha pot sizes, you can, of course, see the difference. This one in the middle is the basket for a three cup mocha pot, and this one is the one for the six cups. The three cups one is um, two, 2.1 centimeter deep, the six cups, three centimeter, and the one cup basket is 1.4 centimeter deep. This means that water, when it's coming from the boiler to the basket, in the one cup mocha pot, it will travel a shorter distance through the coffee pack uh, compared to the other two. And this because uh, it's less deep. So if the flow is the same in all the mochas, uh, here we will have a shorter contact time and also a less resistance of the coffee bed. In fact, every time we brew with a one cup mocha pot, we notice that the color of the first coffee coming out from the chimney is lighter compared to the other two mochas. Because it's difficult to get a good concentration of coffee at the beginning, even if you grind finer. This also happens between the three cups and the six cups where the coffee from the three cups is always lighter than the coffee coming out from the six cups. So, how do we compensate for this? First of all, always fill the basket with coffee to the top, no matter which kind of coffee you're brewing. As I said before, different roast profiles can give you different grams in the basket. Seven for dark, eight for medium, nine for light roast. I have tried to put less grams of light roast in the basket to get more extraction from the coffee, but actually didn't work because I didn't have enough uh, bed depth, so there was not enough contact time and also not enough resistance from the pack. So I don't suggest to put less coffee if you want to start more. And this brings me to the second tip, that is that we need to saturate well and also control the flow, uh, kind of like slow down the flow during the extraction, this to increase that contact time between the coffee and the water. Now let's put the coffee and the water in the mocha and then I will show you the difference between two extractions. Uh, one using a classic method and the other one using a method that I suggest for the one cup mocha pot. Okay, for this video I'm using a medium roast coffee. So I put eight grams and as a reference I ground it at 15 clicks with Commandante and Grinder. Average of microns, 450. Fill the basket with the coffee and tap it with your fingers to distribute. Here it's a bit hard to distribute the coffee with the WDT uh, distribution tool, but if you have any trick, please uh, let me know in the comment section below. Now the water, 60 grams. Close the mocha and let's go to the stove. Now I will do two coffees. The first one uh, is with a classic method where I leave the mocha pot on the stove for the whole brewing time without moving it. The second one, I will remove the mocha from the stove to get a better saturation and also to control better the flow. Then we will compare the coffees and I will show you the difference in extraction. Okay, place the mocha pot on the stove on the smaller one. Here it's even more important with the one cup mocha pot. I leave it a low heat as I always suggest. With the timer I check the brewing time and also with the thermometer I check the temperature of the coffee, but that's only my thing, you don't need to worry about that. It's for me to collect data. Okay, now the coffee is coming out, 148, and as I said, I don't touch anything. And as you can see, the extraction happening very fast. Finished at 2.09, so basically it's around 20 seconds. Let's pour the coffee in a cup and I'm going to weigh the yield, in this case 36.5, 36, 36.5 grams. 
Perfect, the first is done. The second one is ready. I made it in the same way, so same quantity of coffee and same amount of water. Now we're going on the stove and I will show you the second method, the one where we are going to saturate more and also control more the flow and increase this contact time between coffee and water. And then we will see the result. Okay, same here, smaller hob, low temperature, I start the timer and I also have my uh, probe. One minute 47, the coffee is coming out and I remove the mocha from the stove. And I'm gonna leave it away for one minute. And then I'll bring it back on the stove at 2.47. So we use this minute to uh, saturate more the coffee. So the following water that is gonna pass through is gonna extract more solids from the coffee. In the second mocha, the coffee came out 147, the previous one was 148, so we are aligned with both extraction. Now, I'm bringing back the mocha on top, but I'm not leaving there. I will let the coffee coming out and then I will remove it again. Doing this, we don't give too much pressure to the mocha pot, so the water will flow slower through the coffee bed and then put it back on top of the stove and then remove it. And I do this until the brewing is finished. You can see the bubble and that's when uh, we're gonna stop the brewing. I put it in a cup and I weigh the yield. And this is gonna be helpful to calculate the extraction in a second. The first difference between the brews that you notice is the brewing time. The first one came out in 20 seconds and the second one took two minutes, but if we take the, the fact that it stays one minute outside the stove, so we can say that it brewed for one minute. And one minute compared to the 20 seconds is a bit different, you know, 40 seconds more. So this will make a difference in extraction. Maybe we will see in a bit. Second difference that you can notice is the yield. So basically from the first brew, it came out more coffee out from the mocha compared to the second one. And this because we, in these 20 seconds, we, the mocha build more pressure and the tail of extraction push more water outside uh, the chimney. Um, this can be good, but also not. It really depends about the coffee and how it extracts uh, with the mocha. I can say that uh, sometimes this can create kind of over extraction, especially like if you brew very soluble coffee, like dark roast coffee. And so by controlling uh, the extraction, like we did with the second uh, method, we can control this tail of uh, pressure from the mocha pot. Let's place both coffees in a refractometer to check the concentration of them. Okay, the first one is 4.30. The second one, 522. Okay, you can see the difference in concentration and it's actually big, almost 1% of TDS. Uh, what it means? It means that the second cup is more intense, is more strong compared to the first one. But that doesn't also say that uh, it's more extracted, that it depends about other factor that we will see now. But I can tell you that uh, following the second method, you will get more intensity in the coffee. And sometimes this is translated in more extraction. And now with a simple calculation, we will see the extraction of both coffees. Okay, now I'll do the first one, 36 multiplied 4.3, divided the grams that we put in the basket, eight. And the result is 19.35. Now the second one, 31 multiplied 4.22, divided 8, 20.23. Okay, now we can say that the second coffee is more extracted than the first one. Does it mean that the second will taste better? I don't know, it depends. Uh, depends about the taste, how you prefer your coffee. Um, I just want to show you that in this method you can extract a bit more if you need it. Um, also, if you like more intense coffee, the second one is the one that I suggest. And um, if I'm going to taste both coffees, mm, like the first one is really good. It's really juicy. I use um, Ethiopia, um, natural Ethiopia, really nice and fruity. And so the coffee was already good. Um, this one is really nice acidity and very peachy. The second one is good as well, but 
you can, I noticed that in the second one there is a bit more sweetness and that it really depends about your taste. I'm telling you how to achieve things, then you decide how to, to brew it based on your taste. Um, you can grind coarser, you can grind finer to adjust the flavor. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, you're free to do that. But yeah, that's a really nice uh, way to brew uh, the same coffee with the same variables, uh, but changing only the uh, extraction method on the stove. Okay, to run some conclusion, we understood that two are the main things that we need to take care of when we brew our coffee with a one cup mocha pot. First, fill the basket with coffee to the top, no matter which uh, roasting level of coffee you are brewing. Um, this will help with the resistance, with a better depth, and to achieve a better uh, extraction dynamic from the mocha pot. Second, saturate the coffee and control the flow on the stove. It will help to increase this contact time between coffee and water that will result in a, a higher intensity and also higher extraction. Another trick to increase the extraction in case you are brewing a coffee that is hard to extract is to place a aeropress filter on the mocha pot. Uh, this will create more resistance so uh, you will increase the contact time uh, between coffee and water. Also, while I was making the video and doing all the tests, I actually forgot how fun it was to brew with a one cup mocha pot. And what about you? Do you have one? Or are you planning to get one for yourself? I hope this video will help you to achieve a better coffee and to understand more about the dynamic of extraction using a, a one cup mocha pot. I am always happy to hear your thoughts, so if you want to share with me your tips, tricks and your experience with a one cup mocha pot, you can easily do it by dropping a comment in the section below. Thank you very much for watching, I hope to see you in my next videos and in the meantime I wish you a wonderful day and delicious coffee. Ciao!